Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This is uh, part two of James the Clown, the ZBrush character that I started. And the last video we kind of shown blocking out parts of the model. I left off starting with the um, kind of the bow tie. The bow tie I kind of wanted to have like a balloon effect to it. And so I started using the dynamics on it. Right here I'm using the Z remesher to kind of get um, a lower version of it, but without losing too much quality. I felt like I was, it was going too far, so I went down, because I wanted some subdivision levels to be able to do the dynamics either high or low, because in using the dynamics, if you have a lot of subdivisions, sometimes the calculations are a little bit different than if you have a lower subdivision. And so the results are something that you can play with in there. So the center of the bow tie, I kind of just use a cylinder and squish it and select out parts of it to kind of model uh, from the cylinder. Trying to get it to weld. <laughs> it kind of separated out. I didn't really want it separate. I wanted it as one. It's crazy because it's it's still doing like dynamics in there and it's 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 actually um, <laughs> reacting to itself. It was like kind of colliding with itself. I'm just like okay, but you can see right here. I'm just kind of all right. I'm just gonna get it. Like I said, I was trying to get a model as fast as I could out of Zebra. So I think at one point I just like you know what? I'm just gonna keep going and we'll we'll adjust as we need. Because there's sometimes where, in, in any program, where you'll find you're spinning your wheels, and either you either just come back to it later and just keep carrying on to a different part, like I'm doing in the middle. I'm like, you know what, the bow tie's there. Let me just go to the next part, and maybe something will kick in as an idea to kind of solve that issue. Because you can only spend so much time on one part, and you're like, you know what, okay, well, let's let's reset. Let's reset the brain. So that's probably a lot of times that's why I jump back and forth to other parts. So in this, uh, the collision, I wanted it to collide with the that center part, but then it started acting funny. So I think I just mask it off instead. It's just the opposite of just kind of like getting it to work. Because I don't want to spend all day trying to figure out why it didn't work I just wanted to get <laughs> I just wanted a bow tie and that's that's pretty much where this is at I just wanted to get it to kind of go with it so as you can see I inflated it and in, in it kind of where I need it I it looks like one of those balloon uh, bow ties that you would buy and so I kind of add some folds and stuff like that so I start modeling a little bit on it. And I was like, you know what? Here it is. This is just we're just gonna go with it. And I felt like I spent too much time on the bow, and I could have just. There was other processes that I saw with. Um, there was a, a new tool in the new update. Like I was saying, with um, people were making fins for fish and stuff like that. I I might have tried that, but I'm still kind of learning the new features. It could have been an interesting result. It would have been, because I always see those that feature uh, really good for like the 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 cuffs of the uh, hands where clowns always have that um, that cloth kind of hanging down. It could be an interesting result. And as I do more clowns, I guess I'll probably learn that technique down the road. Because if you keep doing something often enough, you'll you'll be like, oh, this is. This is familiar because the hat I actually did on the female character that I posted on, on YouTube and it was just like it, the hat was already kind of in my little uh, what do you call it your your back of your brain I guess you just like a little box back there and you're like hey this is you know your memory just kicks in gear your muscle memory I guess so I got most of the bow tie fixed i saw a trick where 
they were using the Morphe V's after you map it to flatten it out and then I put like patterns on it so that it doesn't deform weird and it actually uh, folds with the geometry as it needs it was a pretty cool trick it was something I've been wanting to try anyway and uh, I, I got to try it on this bow tie a lot of it's just kind of filling it out uh, I felt like since the balloons were going to be in composition that you weren't really going to see much of the bow tie so I just kind of got it roughed in make a make something that you can see right here so yeah you got that creepy clown look that vibe and just like ooh. <laughs> I realized later on when I started posing him that his lower body was kind of short so I kind of stretch it out a little bit to actually feel the composition because it it seems like I mean actually right here is where I start seeing that it seems like I wouldn't have enough room to kind of fill that gap so I kind of move them down with the transpose master uh, transpose master comes in handy whenever just there's a lot of times where you're just like oh man this is so cool um, it works out a lot for for certain issues that you'll you know even if you're not trying to pose something sometimes you just gotta just nudge something a little bit as a whole so moving along looking at the character and now you're getting to kind of like the little details so going in here um, all right this is what happens when I started thinking about like should I put an arm and I thought about it and I was like let me just see what the arm might look like I was gonna put a hand and kind of put like a his finger to his chin or something but for some reason it didn't it, it just wasn't I didn't feel like this clown needed to move I felt like him standing straight just kind of creepy and awkwardly posed would kind of give the vibe that I was going for anyway so I moved on to the buttons because I, I started the arm and I was like you know what no I, and even then I was also thinking time frame I wanted to do this real quick and and just try to see how fast I can do this so the buttons, I just use the Z modeler and start cutting into a, a cylinder. I love Z modeler inside of ZBrush because it, it has pretty cool features. Um, coming from 3D Max, I kind of when I'm modeling in 3D Max, um, sometimes I'll kind of miss some of the tools in ZBrush. I'm like, ah, come on, Max, you could. There's a few things that that I like that you can do inside of here. I'm gonna make a little, um, I was gonna try to connect two spheres and make thread. But for some reason I was I was drawing a blank on what I did. Usually when you connect two uh, spheres, it's gonna be two open gaps. And so I should have had two holes and bridged it across. But at the time I wasn't thinking, I was trying to bridge two faces and that you can do that with um as long as they're together but i kind of just i was like why am i making this hard i went to <laughs> basic primitive um and this is what i used there you go boom done not much to it i'm like why why am i thinking so hard i can just get this delete the rest and call it a day and and not really have to you know put too much effort into trying to do something i could have gone back and did uh z spheres and try to do it this way too but for what i needed you're not going to zoom in on this button and you're not really going to see it so it's just a small detail that you just need to put in and uh, unless we we're going to zoom in that close and yeah go ahead and do it but for my purpose i just wanted to like you know just keep moving forward so now we got a huge button, <laughs> but we scale it to size and just kind of place it on the shirt. Little details like this kind of add character and, and just placing it in there. 
didn't really try to, you know, just not too much effort on that end of doing the buttons. Just real quick, cylinder, boom, done. Now you got buttons. The tricky part is if you wanted to like unwrap it and make, you know, textures for, um, this and that, so. So, like, yeah, breaking out the poly groups and stuff. That's the only other thing that you'd probably be concerned about. So let's see where we're at. Um, putting the little dots, so I'm starting to do the poly paint. And the poly paint, I'm just gonna do a circle and up the resolution and try to get it from looking too uh, distorted. If you don't have enough subdivisions, when you start doing any painting or any masking, you'll start to see where it's not um, subdivided enough. And so I'm just gonna give it some, a little bit more. And right here, I'm okay with losing some of that resolution. I was like, I was gonna kind of go back and redefine some of these parts. So put symmetry on and then mask it off and scale it. There you go, back to where I started. I didn't want to try to make it harder than it should have been. Yeah, I did model it at first, but uh, there's there's more than one way to get to a point to what you need. So I'm gonna put the little dot. And thinking about where the camera is going to be, I was I already had an idea that I wanted it to be kind of on the corner. So I knew you were going to see the other side. So going from there, and just invert and then fill. Now we got little polka dots. Um, a lot of this process is just kind of rinse and repeat with um, some of the textures. You know, you'll just kind of try to get more subdivisions if you find out that you don't have enough and you're going to have to go back and either remesh it and project it and then kind of create what you need to get. And I use a unwrapper here because I already knew that I wanted to use that morph and so you needed uh, a UV map so I jumped ahead to the unwrap and you can see right here in the background and I can see it was flipped so I just wanted to kind of do this randomly so I turn off symmetry and go inside of here and start filling out some of the dots and it actually worked out pretty pretty it was pretty cool I'm like I was like this is a pretty cool little feature because now I got an idea of like if I want to do some other complicated geometry with some patterns that this this could be a good little tool to uh, actually fill out some of that texturing beforehand so now you got little dots that kind of do follow the the mesh topology that's pretty cool to me this part I had a little kind of back and forth with um of the suit i wanted it to have an edge and then at the same time i wanted it to have not you know too much detail either i just wanted it to be there so i do kind of like break off a little um, um what do you call it a crease or, or um, curve on the edge to define it and then put like a, a sweep of a tubes the curved tubes just to kind of give a little bit more detail at the edge so I do the poly groups and try to define what part I need between here and there I, I believe I had a <laughs> something happened with uh, my file I either lost it and I started over so I'm kind of trying to remember what version this is of this because when I started to record, I, I you know, you, you got two things going. You want to finish this model, but you also want to record. And so at the same time, I'm like, uh, I guess I'll start over. But then I want to finish it in a short time frame. So uh, it worked out in the end. It was okay. It made me a little bit quicker <laughs> doing it twice. You know, once you, if you do something more than once, you're going to be like, oh, I got this the second time a little bit quicker. So what happened is, I think I started z-remeshing stuff, and 
when I got to his hair, it just locked up ZBrush and I lost the work that I previously did. So I'm going back through and just Z remeshing as I go because I wanted to clean up the model because I was ready to throw it into Marmoset pretty quickly. A lot of what I do right here is, and you'll see it in other videos, I'll Z remesh and I'll have the high poly still underneath turned on. If you project it with color, it'll actually project that color back onto the model. But if your mesh is too low, it's going to look jagged like you see right here. So what you end up doing is, or what I end up doing is adding a subdivision, projecting it again, and looking at the model. And if, it is, if it's not enough, do it again. Subdivision, project again, and it'll keep deforming to, uh, to the model. And as you keep going up in resolution, you'll see the the paint actually come to be a little bit more crisp. I do go back and paint a little bit in to fix some of the edges. But once I get to a point, I'm like, okay, this is good enough. There's only sub, so many subdivisions until you're just kind of like, all right, this, this is getting insane. Uh, so on the top of his head, he had a hole. And I was like, ah, oh, a little hole. And you already have subdivisions. I rarely use the freeze um, in here, but for this instance, I froze it, capped it, and then filled it, and then painted it back in. There's a few times where that freeze subdivision levels will work for me, and there's some times where I'll try to use it and do something crazy, and it just makes the mesh a little weird, and I'm like, oh. And some of it makes sense of why it does what it does, but there's parts where I'm just like, uh, I just wanted to add a little edge loop right here. And it, and it does a little bit more than I, than I want. But again, that's just me trying to understand what is going on with the when it, whenever you press that. Um, I got an understanding of it, but sometimes the result I want, it's just like, oh, come on. I just want to um, extrude this out and have it perfectly extruded out the way I wanted it. But eh, we find workarounds. <laughs> There's always a way, it's Just you just gotta, sometimes the other workaround is a little bit longer than we expect. So this is my second time doing this collar because in the last file it crashed and so I did this again. And I had an idea, I was just like, you know what, I'm just gonna get this in there real quick and place it and carry on. It's not perfect, I, I, I knew you were not gonna look close, I know when you look at the images you're just going to look at it from a distance and composition was more key to not spending too much time of trying to be too perfect on certain things um, just looking at this model you i wanted it busy enough to where you're not focused on the little things here goes some of that z modeler uh, technique boom just connects that's cool i love that For some reason, it wanted to extrude a little bit more than I wanted, and I was just like, come on. So I think I go back and just actually select out that ring and just like, you know, you're not going to define what I want. I'm going to make you do what I need you to do, ZBrush. So this is where it came to. I was just like, I'm just going to select it. I was fighting it too much just to try to get it to do something very simple. I'm like, I just wanted you just do this. Extrude. Oh, boom. Done. And that, that's, that's that. Some of the capping was a little flat, so I push it up with the islands. Little things like this are actually really cool that I wish other programs had. It, it just, it makes you think differently about modeling when, when you start seeing other tools like this and you're like, oh man, these are cool tools. I kind of smooth back down that near the end. I get the smooth brush and kind of not make it so like rigid. It looks it looks like box model, and I need it to be a little softer. So I do that near the end. I think once I get everything together. So you can see that the clown is almost done, except for like poly painting and some of the little details that I add. So we're going to use the poly groups to get the, the frame mesh is really what it is. 
It's going to frame it twice because there's two poly groups and they're both connected at the one's front and one's back. We only need one. So really all I do is just click it once and then delete the other. That's all I needed right there. Separate it out by mask or whichever or by poly group. But I get that one. There you go. I got a little edge detail. I didn't want the inner part, so I just go back in and delete that by going by the profile and delete the bottom and uh, auto group the piece that I don't want and delete hidden. It's a weird little jump around with the so you you make the poly group, isolate the poly group, invert the poly group, and then delete hidden. It's a whole weird song and dance inside of ZBrush that I always find it. <laughs> I think that kind of to me was intimidating when i first started learning zbrush because it's like all right, i gotta do what you gotta select this invert that it's a weird song and dance but once you do it a couple times then you're it becomes normal inside of zbrush but anybody who you you has used zbrush for you know a little bit of time you'll realize that that's pretty much like a basic kind of thing that you're gonna do often <laughs> So I had double geometry. I had somehow it duplicated itself like three times. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but I had like three models. That's all I just had to delete them. Didn't want to delete too far and just be like, oh, I got to start over. Usually when you delete it like this, cap holes and then just subdivide. You're good. Or Z remesh, whatever works. I didn't need it too crazy. Maybe I added like a subdivision to it and that's it. But other than that, that thickness is, it, it comes in handy so many times, um, but you wouldn't use it on this. This has already got thickness. You would just probably inflate it or something. So poly groups help when you need a texture. So I'm just trying to break it out in pieces. I want the buttons to be the same poly group and the thread to be the same poly group. So when I fill the color, I can actually just say, all right, fill with this, fill with that. And since I knew I wanted to bring it into Marmoset, um, I believe that it'll, I want to say it breaks it out in material groups. If you do poly groups inside of there, like if you have one material and then a different material, I think it, it breaks it out. I, I want to say it does. I'd have to go back and refresh, but my mind says it does. So most of this is, the clown's pretty much done except for uh, unwraps Z, you know, unwrapping the mesh and getting it going. And then the hair, this hair, I spend a little bit more time than I wanted to on the hair. I, I started one way and went another way and then I just like, I was like, I started trying to groom it. I started trying to do all kinds of things. And hair and ZBrush to me is always kind of weird because um, you'll have an idea. And then sometimes the hair will be like, um, it'll tell you something else. And you're like, you know what? I like that. So that's what happened. So I did the presets. I, I didn't want to use uh, just regular. I just wanted to see what's out there real quick. I didn't want to spend too much time on this process i just figured i'd find a good uh, substitute and i did eventually i went to put this real crazy hair right here and i went kind of uh, short curly hair and it kind of worked this probably would have worked for whatever i needed but it, it i don't know it didn't feel the same so a lot of my crashes came from me trying to unwrap this hair. I was trying to figure out how to get um, it to unwrap so that I can actually have uh, the model pretty clean inside a marmoset, but it didn't work out that way and I didn't want to spend too much time trying to figure it out either. I'll, I'll figure it out on another day, but for this process, I just wanted to get to a finish line. Again, I set a deadline in my mind saying I need to get this done in about a day. 
and that that deadline worked it was just you had to cut you you'll have cut corners once you start putting time frames on things and uh, we do that all the time when we work on a project where you always have a deadline but whenever it's like personal projects I feel like we never or I never set deadlines for myself <laughs> and uh, it ends up becoming a, a, a model in your folder and then years later you're like hey here's that model and what I'm trying to do is go back and finish these models as fast as I can I have a lot of them that are very close if you follow the pumpkin head I actually just need to add like a pitchfork and save it out here goes the hair I try to get some little crazy hair like the his like gravity doesn't affect him like he's being in a wind tunnel and that crossed my mind to go with this one but it just it it felt like I, w I would need more like I, I, if I was going to go this route I, I should I would have to put confetti going the opposite direction right or something I don't know it it did kind of make me wonder if this would work It looks crazy, like a crazy bozo, like Bozo the Clown. And I do try to groom it. I'm like, all right, let's see if we can groom this hair a little bit down. Just give a little bit more, little of that, I guess, it. I guess we we'll always come back to that clown from it. Yeah, a little crazy. But then it started becoming more of a, his, his hair started becoming like a, a, a sculpture. <laughs> I started looking at it. I was like, this doesn't look like he's got like crazy stuff coming out of his hair now. It doesn't look like hair. I was trying to go a weird route with this. And it just wasn't working for me. And then in the end, I don't even use this one. I just kind of um, go back to the another default and adjust that. I do need a refresh on some of the grooming features inside of ZBrush. I feel like sometimes if you like you can mask out parts of the hair and do polygroups and stuff like that. It was just I was just trying to get the hair to go straight out with curliness, but somewhere between here and there I'm just kinda like now I'm just trying to groom it back straight. But this is part of the process. I, I want, I want to show this part because this this shows that yeah, I'm gonna have I had struggle with this part. This is this is this is the part where you're just kind of like ah, uh, let's just let's just throw it against the wall and see what what happens and just if is it is it make art? Does it make something out of it? It's like splattering the paint and just seeing if you can see anything in the picture but now then this is hair on hair I think I put a two levels of hair that would have been heavy geometry so this is about where I stick I I, I, I like this hair because it kind of worked for him this this kind of has a that clown feature that I like Messing with a few of the settings and getting it a little bit right. Pushing some of those extra straight hairs inside of his face away, and that was it. I was like, okay, this this actually works for me. Just pushing that back. There you go. Put it back on the the little cap, and there you go. This, uh, I was trying to get the the color to come across to Marmoset. I think it didn't carry, so I just applied a straight color to it. Yeah, that's why you see in the final image, it's, it's more of a, uh, what do you call it? Like a red or orange. I'd have to look at the picture again, but. And there you go. All that, all that back and forth and just to end up with a, a simple hair. 
option in here. So after I get the hair set up, uh, I pretty much move on to doing the balloon. And I knew I needed balloons for the scene and I was gonna duplicate them uh, a couple hundred times. Uh, I've never tried to do more than one object inside a marmoset and I kind of learned there's there's some grouping in there that I'll probably discuss on the next video that I probably could have done it a little bit smarter and it, it got it got messy I started making duplicates of folders and after a while I was just trying to get it done I was just like all right this works anyway it's, I can still grab a balloon I need to learn if there's a, a marquee like a rectangle select of multiple objects in Marmoset because that that was one of the few things that I, I was like, I should be able to select the whole group, but I didn't know if there was a key or something, but I didn't find it, so. Using the balloon, I used the profile, the, what do you call that, sweet profile? I forget the name of it. This is a cool little feature that, if you don't use it often enough, it, it's pretty cool, like, it worked perfectly for a balloon if you don't know where it's at just click the little I guess that main button where the icon is of your meshes and it'll pop up sweep profile or something like that and, and uh, it'll you have this option just go down to your initialize I wish you could pop out that screen a little bit bigger to have a little bit more uh, zoomed in effect to see but it works either way. And you kind of got like a generic balloon. Going from here, smoothing it out, just kind of pushing and pulling. Not too much effort on that end, just using that tool, it kind of helped. Kind of make it squeezed and then put in the little knot at the with the string. I use um, Z Z spears for the string. I probably could have used something else, but uh, Z spheres work. Just want a little more control, I guess, at the time. So using the radial symmetry and just kind of molding in some of that little detail at the bottom. Inflate, deflate. Just pushing and pulling it out. And there you go. You got a balloon. Since I wanted it to be um, kind of copied around, I needed it to be a little bit low poly too. And we're using the Z spear to actually create the string. Not really much to this part. It's just pretty much wrapping around the Z spears and pushing and pulling and scaling and making it look like a like it should but almost coming to the end of this this video but yeah if, <laughs> if there's anything to learn in here uh, the hair is, is, is something I need to actually uh, go back and do some more homework on because I use it for grass and it, and it always works out but when it comes to hair for what it's probably meant for, uh, I'll struggle a little bit. I've always wanted to do a Muppet. I don't know. A Muppet seems pretty straightforward, right? You just got to put a fur over it's like a, a spearish character and go from there. And maybe I'll do one just to kind of push push me to force, force myself to learn the fiber mesh in there. So Z-Spheres always my favorite tool one of my favorite tools inside of zbrush and i always love using z spheres you can't go wrong with it you just moving the little points and getting a little mesh out of it this is fun so but yeah we're coming to the end of this video i'm um, probably gonna call it right here there's a few more sections in the next sections hopefully we'll get into marmoset and kind of showing the, that process but i believe the next part of the video is more unwrapping and applying more of the texture and then trying to set it up for putting into marmoset because um unless i didn't record that but i, I believe i do and most of it's just um, 
getting in there so i appreciate you watching i hope it was informative and yeah have a good day